Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 444. Testosterone blood levels don't always indicate your need for testosterone. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, medical director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. One of the most controversial features of the practice that you do is the misunderstanding that is in the community, but also in the medical community, mm-hmm. about how to determine if somebody needs to replace their testosterone. Mm-hmm. The measurement of testosterone in a blood test gives you a number. It tells mm-hmm. you total testosterone. Some doctors, when they ask you to measure testosterone, that's the only number that they get. Mm-hmm. Others who know more what they're doing will ask for a total testosterone and a free testosterone mm-hmm. measure. But even then, they don't necessarily and especially when looking at women's testosterone mm-hmm. levels, don't necessarily understand what those numbers mean. Well, the most the most important impediment here is that on the lab sheet, the normals mm-hmm. that are considered normal by somebody, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not sure who, are very low. So you may have all the symptoms of testosterone uh, deficiency, but your normals fit into the... the normal for the lab test, lab the standard, tests. right. So your doctor does what most doctors do. They just look down. Is it normal or not normal? Oh, it's normal, so see see you later. So you guys have all, all memorized a set of numbers. Right. And, and so that you can see instantly if something jumps out because it's below or above normal. Right. We don't just look down the columns. And, and, and a lot of times they're highlighted if, if they're mm-hmm. abnormal. So they look mm-hmm. down the column for the, the, the highlighted sections. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to testosterone, if it's in that range, they say, well, you're, you're okay. Right. But the, tr- the true normal, and, and their normal may be... 250 uh, to, you know, 800. Which is a hell of a range. Which is a huge range uh, for total testosterone. It may be that range, but my normal for people who are well, young, healthy men who are, who have erections without a problem, who have a good sex drive, who have good muscle mass, whose brains work, 400 to 1500 is the range that we go by. And this is common, although it's still controversial, even with the age management medical doctors. For men. For men. Right. So this this is one of the things that we look at, and that's the easiest thing. Free testosterone is a little different. Free means the active part of your testosterone. Most of your testosterone is just storage. It doesn't do anything. It's bound up with a protein and inactivated. But uh, for men, several percent of their testosterone is active. And that percent should equate to a number 129 um, nanograms per milliliter. So active versus inactive. Active means that it is available to bind to a testosterone receptor site right. as it flows through your body. Mm-hmm. Inactive means it passes those receptor sites by and doesn't make a delivery. It, it, can't, it, it can't, cannot. It can't attach to your cells, so it can't do anything for you. Right. It's just there in case you lose a lot of blood and they become active, a certain percentage become active if you lose a lot of blood. Yeah. So that was God's way of protecting men and women from having no testosterone, damage, especially right. when they were young and needed to procreate. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing. The second thing is all doctors are taught to look at is blood levels, blood levels. They are not taught to look at receptor sites. Part of that has to do with we can test blood levels, right. but we can't test your receptor sites. So you we, don't know how many I have or how well they're working. And I don't know if they're sensitive to testosterone, which means they bind right away and they're very, they're very um, sticky mm-hmm. and testosterone binds and makes everything So it's almost work. like a magnet that just pulls it out of the bloodstream. Right. It does, yeah. and, and but some people are more resistant. So their receptor sites tend to let free testosterone pass them by sometimes, and you can have a good blood level and not feel it. So, so this is one of the things that we look at when we're talking to patients, and the only way we can test, in, in research centers, you can test 
sensitivity of re receptor sites. We can't. There's no method that is available to doctors so to test that. Is there sort of that. an assumptive guideline that you do know about that you can tell, am I, am I more or less likely to have sensitive receptor sites? Right, there is. What? But, you know, I don't know. So here's the deal. If, if, you have, if your genetics, your family came from closer to the equator, you are more sensitive to testosterone. That means you pick up testosterone easily, and that means you may not need as high a blood level to feel good. So your because cell magnets are really good. The, clo the magnets are really sticky. Strong, yeah. So as you approach um, the north and south um, extremes, extremes, yeah. you know, so Scandinavia, um, that that was Tro Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. Yeah, you get outside those ranges. That's right. Yeah. So then, you, if that's your genetics, that's where your family came from. I know in America, everybody's from everywhere, but if you can find your dominant genetics, then that means that you're more resistant to testosterone. It takes more testosterone to actually make your receptors work. So in that case, if you're from Scandinavia and I give you testosterone and I give you get you to a good level, mm -hmm. say I get you to a total of 800 and a free of 150, 200, then you should feel great. But you're insensitive to it. So I have to give you more. Your levels have to be higher for you to feel your testosterone. That's one thing no one looks at. So, so because I'm born from a colder climate, my receptor sites are a little slower. They don't grab as quickly. They're not as sticky. They're not as sticky. passes by. They're not as sticky to the testosterone. Okay. It doesn't just attach and make the cell do what it's supposed to do. And you are, you are English, Irish, Scottish, right? Northern yeah. European. Right. And I'm a little bit lower in the uh, half of my genetics are Italian and the other half are, high, are north, more north. Yeah. So I don't know if mine are sticky or not. I, don't, I, I think they're insensitive because I need more testosterone. So you can tell by the amount you need. Right. Oh, by so. the amount you need to get rid of your symptoms. So that for men, that would be uh, to get rid of your ED, to get rid of your uh, low libido, to get rid of your fatigue, to get rid of loss of to bring your muscles back, to bring your energy back, your stamina, uh, to decrease your depression. All of those things are things we ask patients. That's how we determine if their receptor sites are actually receiving well, the but testosterone. In, there, there's a kicker in there, too, that the receptor sites for testosterone that I have, whether I'm born closer to the equator or further yes. away from it, uh -huh. are also receptor sites or, or will grab estrogen. Right. And as a man, I didn't know that I made estrogen. I thought right. that was a female hormone. I know. And they thought that testosterone was just a male hormone, but that just made it easy for people to think about, but it's not so true. So my testosterone receptor sites, I mean, like I have a good friend that's on a testosterone patch to replace his testosterone. Right. I was talking to you about his situation mm -hmm. and you said he needs to be warned about the estrogen component. So right. what is that about? So, uh, well, let me go backwards to not, not replacing the testosterone yet, okay. but to, as men get older... Their testosterone converts more into estrogens, estrone primarily, which gives them man, man boobs and it gives them belly fat. So, um, so as men age, we have to counter that because then when they get the estrogen, estrogen is three times as sticky as testosterone in both men and women. So your body's more likely to pick up the estrogen. So women are more pushy. That estrogen just makes it push through and grab those sites. We've already proven that both men and women have estrogen and testosterone, <laughs> so I'm not going there. You're not going there. But <laughs> even though you yeah. tried. Yeah. Um, but, but that's blocking their ability to use their testosterone, so they get a double whammy. Mm -hmm. So they, it, when testosterone be, becomes estrogen, the estrogen goes up, the testosterone goes down, and that's one whammy. The other whammy is the testosterone can't make those receptors work. Right. It can't attach or plug in. So we have to get rid of the estrogen and we have to increase the testosterone to make these. Now, when I say get rid of, I do not mean wipe out. I mean we have to decrease it to a normal level, right. a normal, young, healthy male level, not zero, just normal. Which brings us back to those lab sheets again. Right. Right. So, so when we look and when we look at estrogen levels, mm -hmm. that normal on the sheet, estrone is not right. The estrone level that they think men should have is really high, like 60 or 80. And young men have 30 or less. So we try to bring you down to young, healthy estrone levels, maybe 5 to 10. 
Hmm. So that's very important, and that's not something that we can see as a standard lab sheet with the standard numbers. That's that's not going to show up. So is that essentially a trial and error thing then? Because you don't have a way to measure the receptor sites. You, well, you it can takes guess. a lot of experience. Right. But in but I could I could excuse me I could make it um, distilled down to you look at the blood blood level of both total and free testosterone, and then you check all the symptoms. If the symptoms aren't gone when you've got a right. normal blood level, right. then you've got to push the, bl the blood level and try to get your free level to of a little higher level of yeah. testosterone. And you've got to get the estrogen down. Right. And in general, when we do that, then people feel it and they, and they sleep better and all their symptoms disappear. So blood test symptom identification, and general quality of life. You asked me about all of those mm -hmm. things. Am, am I comfortable? Am I happy? Do I mm -hmm. feel positive energy? In order to make your determination of whether or how much I might need. Right. So so if you don't have any tes testosterone and you, your symptoms are, are terrible, then you need testosterone. Right. But But what if you're somebody who has normal, say, five or 600 total testosterone and say 130 free testosterone and you still have ED and you still have no libido and you still have depression and you aren't making any muscle and you still got belly fat. And so then I look at your estrogen. Yeah. Is your estrogen high? So then I have to decrease your estrogen. But you also asked me about anxiety and depression yes. and stress. Yes. I mean, yes. you take an hour with your patients yes, or more if needed. I do. And most Doctors, especially doctors, are, are places that you can go to get your testosterone replaced. Mm -hmm. Don't take that time with you. They, they have a sort of one size fits all, especially if they're a high volume clinic. Mm -hmm. You're not a high volume. You're not churning no. out thousands of people a week. No. You take this time to find out what each individual male or female who comes in, mm -hmm. what their symptoms are, what their blood tests are, what their numbers are, mm -hmm. what their sense of their quality of life and health is. How they feel, all their medications, all their and where supplements. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to get to? That all affects it. Yeah. I mean, there are many medications that decrease your, your, um, your feeling, your testosterone, or actually even connecting to your receptor sites. So we have to look at the medications and cha and change, or ask another doctor to change the medications, right. to to bring bring your symptoms down to zero, make you feel great. And then at the end of the day, once you've made that determination and you, you've put pellets in somebody, mm -hmm. you've given them the foundation upon which they can build, which means right. that as, as men age mm -hmm. and they get weaker and they lose muscle mass mm -hmm. and bone strength and all that sort of thing, if they don't have testosterone in a sufficient available number mm -hmm. for those receptor sites, mm -hmm. they can't build muscles. They no. can't hold muscles. But if you replace that lost testosterone and they have a sufficient number, then they still have to build the muscle. So they right. need testosterone to Right, do... testosterone is an anabolic, it, it shouldn't be a bad word, anabolic hormone. Right. It builds tissue. It builds muscle. It builds skin. So it builds it capacity. It builds your brain but back. you still have to fill it. Yes. But it, now for muscle, men will get a little bit of extra muscle even if they don't exercise. But they won't get really good bodies and, right. and, and a really good physique unless they get their testosterone back. Okay. And but but if you don't care about your muscles, if that's not your interest, you should care about uh, your brain. Your brain needs testosterone to keep it, well, growing. I, I, yes, but also balance and mu and bone strength. Yes, I mean I, I almost mean, see, everything I, I that makes us terrified young. when I see old people on walkers. I do too. And canes because I I fear for my own future that way. Well, and I, I have a hard enough. time because I I want to tell them about yeah. what is available to them because right. I don't think they know. Well, no. And or what is available to somebody that I see who's who's not having any balance any when he walks and he's a little older because the next step's a walker. Maybe we could pull you back from the edge. And we have done that with 85-year-olds, you know, that are in a wheelchair after surgery and can't get better because they don't have any muscle mass. So we've been talking mostly about men because our mm -hmm. book, Got Testosterone, which is for mm -hmm. and about men, has just been published, just been released mm -hmm. this month. But you also do women. Yes, I also take care of women. And one of the bigger challenges that you have in taking care of women is when their normal physician, their regular mm -hmm. physician, gets really distraught about the testosterone numbers on the blood test because they don't know what you know. Right. 
And and so then sometimes those doctors write you nasty letters yeah. or their their patients or they your say patients terrible come things in. to my patients. Yeah, and, they and say, my oh, patients she's are feeling you. better. You're a heart attack. Yeah, and, patient, and and that's not true. Yeah. and the patients feel better, and all their symptoms are gone. So, and their doctor can't give them anything that's going to do that because what they need is testosterone. The thing with women is that we need, we, first of all, we have a lot less testosterone than men. We have a much smaller amount. And out of that smaller amount, our percentage of active testosterone is a lot lower. Men can have two, maybe 3% that's active. Women are going to have 1% or less. And that's out of a smaller amount. So, that actually, that percentage goes down with age because their estrone, the old lady estrogen, goes up and does the same thing to women as men, fills up their receptor sites. So, so this HealthCast is a quick run-through of these concepts. If you are intrigued by what you are hearing, we would encourage you to read both of our books, uh, The Secret Female Hormone, which gives you all of the information that you need about symptoms and, and treatments and medicine and the complications and whatever and how that to look at your leads blood you levels. to that decision. Uh, and got testosterone. They are available on Amazon, or they can be obtained from Dr. Maupin's office at biobalancehealth.com. So please check it out. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.